Hi, Sam here with JBugs.com. We're back to work on a 1971 Eurolux Super Beetle, and we're back in our own shop. After leaving my friend's shop, I took the plan and body home to my house and got to work on the chassis first. It was clean inside and out, top and bottom. All the surface rust was treated with rust converter. And then the bottom side was undercoated and the rest of the chassis was painted. In this video, we're going to cover the last bit of the chassis that we haven't completely disassembled. The rear trailing arms and axles. Most of the teardown was covered between our rear disc brake and our lowering videos, so we'll gloss over those portions. We'll get started with the back of the chassis up on jack stands and remove the rear wheels. The axle nut cotter pin is removed. Then we bolt on an axle nut removal tool and a torque multiplier tool so we can loosen and remove the rear axle nut. The tools and the brake rotor are removed so we can remove the axle bearing cap, the brake caliper bracket, and the axle spacer. Then we try to remove the stub axle. It should be able to be pushed out by hand like we were able to do on the left side. It doesn't, so we thread on an axle nut to protect the threads of the axle and then repeatedly beat on the nut. The outer wheel bearing frees up, so we remove the nut and pull out the bearing in the inner race. The axle nut is threaded back on, and we continue hitting the axle nut until eventually the axle comes free from the trailing arm. With the axle free, we can see the inner spacer, and reaching into the trailing arm, we can remove the center spacer. At the back side of the trailing arm, we use a hammer and a custom flathead screwdriver to remove the inner axle seal so we can access the bearing snap ring. We couldn't find our snap ring pliers, so a few flathead screwdrivers are used to pry the ring out. A hammer and punch are used from the opposite side to tap out the inner bearing, and then most of the grease is cleaned out of the trailing arm. Next, we'll get the trailing arm removed from the spring plate, loosening and removing the bolts there. Then we loosen and unthread the trailing arm pivot bolt from the chassis. It is removed, and we'll note the two large washers. Both washers are installed at the outer edge of the trailing arm. The trailing arm is lifted up and out of the chassis, and we head over to our press so we can remove the rubber pivot bushings. A hammer and chisel or prunch could be used to remove the bushings if a press isn't available. We're going to do a little modification to our bump stops while we're here. When a VW rear end is lowered, the stock bump stops are oftentimes compressed too far and will pop off. So, whenever the suspension is bottomed out, the metal dimple for the bump stop will end up hitting a shock tower. This doesn't really hurt anything, but the sound is pretty annoying. So, I like to install low profile bump stops to prevent the metal to metal contact. The metal nipple is removed with a few strikes from a hammer. Then, we drill out a hole in the center of the cup so we can install the bolt-in bump stop. This will help to quiet up the rear suspension quite a bit. The last portion of the rear suspension we'll remove is the spring plates, starting with the spring plate cover, and then, since we've already lowered the rear suspension, we can pull off the spring plate relatively easily. If you haven't lowered your car already, be cautious, as the spring plates are normally under a load and can spring down with a lot of force once they are past the torsion housing. We cover this in depth in our rear suspension lowering video. We've already set the ride height at the rear of our car, and we want to make sure that we remove the spring plate from the torsion bar, and not the torsion bar from the chassis. So, we pull the plate out slowly, and we want to make sure that the torsion bar stays in place. Once we know the torsion bar is staying in place in the chassis, we slide the plate back in, and scribe the torsion housing so we know where to reinstall it later. The plate is slid out completely, and we tap the torsion bar to make sure it's fully seated, and we remove the outer spring plate bushing from the plate. The inner bushing is removed from the torsion housing, and once the process is finished on both sides, we can clean up the areas on the chassis and the other parts that we just removed.
All the parts will be painted and then we'll cover their reinstallation soon. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, when you need parts for your vintage VW, head over to jbugs.com.